Welcome to the channel for the first time viewers. Welcome back for my existing subscribers. I want to show you all, um, especially on the MSI B or 650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. Uh, this is as of December 3rd, um, which BIOS I'm using and why. So you go to MSI.com and you can even Google search your particular brand of motherboard. Um, and the main thing for me is, is um, you got to really pay attention. Right. So when you when you get to this screen, if you're just clicking on any board, you can easily download the incorrect BIOS. And it was more common in the previous um, generations. Now they just kind of include Wi-Fi with everything. But let's say it was last generation and you had a, a Z690 Tomahawk D4. Then you had a Z690 Tomahawk D4 Wi-Fi. So one of them obviously has Wi-Fi. One of them doesn't. And the BIOS are could be different. Right. So just keep that in mind find your specific board. You can also just go to MSI.com and you can do, 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 do products and then go through the drop down menu. So motherboards and then you select the MAG or whatever board you have. Um, I'm really focused on this one because this is the one that I built the 7800 X3D with ran into all kinds of issues when I try to overclock the RAM. Uh, so I want to try to see if I can help anybody else. And maybe you don't run into these issues, right? So you go to support and this is where you can find your chipset drivers and really anything that you need. These are videos that show you how to use the BIOS flash or M flash on uh, MSI. So if you don't know how to do it at all, it just shows you that you need a USB stick and things like that. Uh, I tried this one here and the issue, uh, I might go back to it because I have had nothing but issues with the RTX 4090 and 4080 with this uh, particular system. And that is because I had to boot up in CSM. So using U UFI, it's a little bit more advanced what I'm talking about here, but like the type of boot that it goes through instead of using that, the newer system, it's you, I have to use an older system to get into windows uh, from my BIOS. And essentially this, uh, this, uh, this one down here, I can still overclock my Ram to 7,600 um, C 34 and everything's fine. Now with this one here, I, anything I tried to do, it just didn't post like everything just crashed error, didn't post. And I was like, okay, cool. Obviously there was an issue cause they don't release BIOS <laughs> back to back like this. Um, and what I had noticed is that this allowed me to, to post, but would revert back to UEFI. So now that I'm using the Tai Chi in this build, the 7,900 XTX, that's not an issue. But the problem, the big problem is that with the RTX cards, this going back to UEFI means that I would get a black screen when Windows starts like half the time uh, and you wouldn't be able to see anything or do anything. If you're paying close attention, a uh, easy way to get past that is to try a restart. And then a lot of times the handshake will work, which is like when the IGPUs like hands off to the to the actual graphics card so you can get a visual representation of Windows. Um, that'll just work and then you'll be fine. But there are some times where it just doesn't work and then you got to go into the BIOS and activate CSM again. So I just, it's, it's wild, right? So this BIOS here is what I'm currently using. I'm going to try this one here again and see if I can get my Ram overclock because this one here was, um, was just, it was headaches, man. And maybe it's something I'm doing. Maybe it's a new setting that it added, but it doesn't make sense that this works, this works, and this does not work. So, and it's not that the RAM isn't supported. So if you go to compatibility for anybody that's curious, um, you can find the 7,600 speeds right here. So I know this is tested usually with one dim, but if you look here, it's actually two dims. So, and it's really relatively low voltage. So 7,600, I tune my secondaries and tertiary. So I'm at like 1.34 or 1.45 volts. I'm going to try to lower it and do some more testing until I find that stable point. But yeah, um, that's all. So again, you get into your not compatibility, but drivers and downloads. And then I'm using the 7D75 V1A beta. So that's what I'm kind of using right now. Um, anything too old and you won't have that higher um, XMP setup. So if you bought a 7200 kit expecting to just turn on AXMP, 
you won't get that. Or DOCP, you won't get that, right? And this goes across the board regardless of manufacturer. So in the beginning, the AMD side could only go up to 6400, right? And you had to have like crazy voltage, good RAM, and set it up yourself. Like you weren't just going to click a button and get 6400. Um, but now it's, it's significantly better and you needed luck too. Um, so now it's significantly better because you can kind of go into what Intel has had, which is like year two, um, and essentially get higher frequency. And it's a lot, even though it may be, you know, on par or a little bit behind like a 6200 C30 or, you know, a better tuned kit with lower, you know, and the one to one ratio, I just feel like the voltage necessary uh, and the time it takes to to do all of it is just significantly easier the uh, the newer way, right? So going with the uh, like seventy six hundred or seventy four hundred or seventy two hundred, um, and having that ratio. So that's just my take on it, and I wanted to show my specific BIOS uh, things I would never download. MSI Center, it's cancer for your PC. Um, I don't really go into the firmware, and this chipset driver is actually outdated. I normally go to AMD. You type in, or not type in, but you can go to your AM4. So chipsets. AM5, actually, what am I saying? And then I don't have the E. I have regular B650. And then you'll find the newer one. So if you notice, the other one was from like March, and this one is from August. So that's how you get your chipset drivers. If you're using an X3D chip, <clears throat> make sure that you go into your Windows Store and you keep this up to date. Right, so you go right here, library, get updates, and you'll see game bar and like your game bar plugins, gaming services, all that gaming stuff on the PC needs to be updated, updated, or up to date, because that's kind of how it passes through the Vcash if you get something that's a little higher, like a um, like a seventy nine fifty X three D. All right, with that, I'm gonna cut out from here. I'll let you in the flip.